All right, Jewish bimbimbap. And now I know what you're thinking. It, it sounds a little gimmicky, and I can understand that. But I want you to know that this came from an actual place, an actual appreciation of bimbimbap and an obvious appreciation for the heritage foods that I like to make. So basically how this came up was that I was starting to regularly make Ashkenazi Jewish food. My refrigerator is filling up with all of these leftovers and sometimes I just don't know what to do with them. And then of course I think of bimbimbap, which has been part of Korean cuisine for centuries and has historically been a very customizable dish using leftover vegetables and sometimes meat. I had a lot of leftover vegetables and some other food that I would sometimes not know what to do with and so then it occurred to me, why not turn it into some kind of a Jewish bimbimbap? I also like eggs on top of things so it seemed to work out pretty nicely and the end result is something that I think actually works and, and makes sense. And I actually do honestly see a lot of crossover between traditional Ashkenazi Jewish food and Korean food. Things like ginger, mushrooms, and, and even the chukshuka sauce all that I have in this, although not traditionally spicy, you know, you throw a little gochujang in there and it gets spicy and then there's, it, it, it makes sense to me. So you just gotta try it before you roll your eyes at me. And if you truly are using leftovers, this is actually a rather easy dish to prepare because you're basically just pulling out leftovers and putting them on top of some rice, although, to use one of my favorite staples of Ashkenazi Jewish cooking, I substitute the rice that's typically at the bottom of a bowl and put in some kasha or, or buckwheat. So basically you've got your layer of kasha and then you're just putting it on top of their little stations of things that, that you like, things that you think are yummy. So I think it's actually pretty simple. So I'm going to stop yammering about this Jewish bimbimbap and I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to make it. Alright, so we're going to start with the paprika marinade. Use a tablespoon of olive oil, put it into a small bowl. Squeeze half a lemon and put the juice inside. Zest that half a lemon and then go ahead and microplane a little bit of ginger. Put in a teaspoon of sweet paprika, a teaspoon of smoked paprika, a teaspoon of kosher salt, and either a quarter teaspoon or half teaspoon of cayenne pepper depending on how spicy you like it. Then put in some ground black pepper and give it a little whiskey. For a little extra spice, you can go ahead and put in some gochujang or sriracha. Then go ahead and put your tofu into the paprika marinade and swish it around, get it all nice and covered. Oh, hey, would you look at that? I forgot to put the garlic in. Go ahead and take a few cloves of garlic and microplane that directly into your paprika marinade. Make sure it's nice and incorporated. Now move on over to your skillet. We're gonna make the shikshuka sauce. Cover the pan with a little bit of olive oil. When it's hot, put in one chopped onion for about seven to 10 minutes. Add your garlic for about a minute. Then throw in some chopped red bell pepper. Let that get a little bit soft. Use veggie stock as needed to deglaze the pan. Then go ahead and throw in your spinach. I know that looks like a lot, but it's going to wilt. There you go, see, I wouldn't lie to you. Meanwhile, you're going to grate two carrots and one zucchini. When that's ready, go ahead and throw it into your skillet. Throw a little salt on as needed. Then once you have your zucchini and carrot in there, you can start seasoning with smoked paprika, sweet paprika, cumin, salt, and pepper to taste. At this point, you could also throw in a little more cayenne pepper if you like some spice. Or if you want to match it with your paprika marinade, you can throw in a little gochujang or sriracha. Go ahead and microplane a little more ginger directly into your shikshuka sauce. Add some zest from the second half of your lemon. Throw in a couple chopped tomatoes. Now go ahead and add your can of tomato sauce. Again, here's where you could add a little bit of sriracha or your gochujang. If you want to make the sauce thicken a little bit, add about a tablespoon of tomato paste. And after you bring that to a boil, lower it to a simmer and cover it. Now let's move on over to your kasha or your buckwheat. Throw in a cup of kasha into a small pan. Fill it up with two cups of veggie stock or water if you don't have any more stock. Bring it to a boil and then lower it to a simmer. Check it every now and again just to make sure that it's not sticking to the pan. While that's all happening, we're gonna start cooking up some of our veggies. Oh hey, there I am in the oily reflection. Take a small skillet, put a little bit of olive oil on it and once it's heated up, throw in your veggies. I know other recipes like to give specific measurements of just how much broccoli or just how many mushrooms, but just put in as much as you're gonna eat. I put in as much broccoli as what comfortably covers the pan, same with the mushrooms, and I did everything for about just five minutes. So broccoli on, a little bit of salt, check it, move it around every now and again, five minutes, take it off, put the mushrooms on, a little bit of salt, move it around every now and again, take it off, and then put on the cucumber, a little bit of salt, and give that five minutes after moving it around. Then once all of that's done, go ahead and throw in your tofu, which should have been marinating for a little bit in that paprika marinade. And the same deal here, you're just gonna go ahead and let that cook for about five minutes. Make sure to move it around so that all sides of the tofu get some love. And there you go, now you've got your Jewish bimbimbap spread. 
We've got all the veggies we just cooked up. You can see a little leftover potato kugel. Link below if you want that recipe. And then three different kinds of pickled veggies. Now we're gonna start building our bibimbap. Go ahead and throw in your base of kasha and then just build it with whatever you want. Use all the veggies, don't use all the veggies. I don't care, it's your food. Do with it what you will. Me, I'm going with the mushrooms, cucumber, broccoli, some leftover potato kugel that I did heat up in the oven. Some of that paprika marinated tofu. She was spicy, folks. And then shakshuka sauce. Now I know it looks like it's maybe getting a little overcrowded, but it worked out fine. All these flavors, I think, meshed quite nicely together. I'm throwing on some of my pickled carrots, a little bit of the pickled red cabbage, and then on top of the potato kugel, some of the pickled red onions. And then it wouldn't be a bimbap if we didn't have an egg on top. So there you go, we're throwing on an egg. And there you have it, folks. It's a Jewish bimbap. Who'd have thunk it? Now, I hope you see that it isn't as gimmicky as maybe it sounds when you first hear it. If you did roll your eyes, I hope that you're, you know, back eye level with us. And not only do I hope that you're with us, I hope you either try making a traditional Korean bimbap, try making this Jewish bimbap, or take some of your own heritage foods and make your own bimbap. That's actually what I hope for the most. So go ahead, give it a shot, and as always, thanks for watching. This is the part I hate the most where I'm supposed to look in the camera and say, please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. Ah, oh, that felt so unnatural.